So here's the Jeep. My goal is to get the leaf springs changed, and I have not been successful so far. But I thought today we would start by doing a quick measurement of what we got before we begin the job. So if I can get to the end of the job, we'll know where we're at. So with most of the weight out of the Jeep, we're looking at 16 inches from the center to the fender. And on the front, we're dealing with about 18 and a half, maybe 18. So what we got is low in the back. I got most of the weight out of the back, nothing big back there, and a little high in the front. So we're at least half inch high in the front, and we are a good solid inch low in the back. And so the HD springs are put on, it's the Dorman springs, 100 bucks a piece. I'd be pretty surprised if we don't get an inch over stock, so they'll probably be sitting at 19 inches when I'm done, maybe, or maybe 18 inches. I think the back is supposed to sit at 17, so if it's 16, 16 now, it should probably be up to 17 and then maybe 18, because they're inch over stock. But first things first, get things jacked up, get some wheels off, take a look. All right, so we're about 20 minutes in. Got some tools out. I got the Jeep jacked up by the frame rails. You can see that. Let me get our first look at what we got going on here. Most Jeep people would probably say this isn't too bad as far as rust, but I've been having a heck of a time. Got that cleaned up. Wasn't able to get it to budge last weekend, but I'm going to try some different stuff today. Trying to avoid a bunch of cutting. I don't really want to do that, but if it comes to that, I suppose it does. So we got this basically down as low as it'll go, maybe a little bit more. And we're going to start taking a look at a few things. There's not much to do just yet. Um, I'll probably clean up a few of these bolts and get them arrow coiled so that they can start getting a bit loose. Um, and we'll get started. All right, so we're taking a stab at the bolt. I haven't done much with the spring yet. I want to show you this toy. So this is a 1,000 foot-pound battery-powered impact wrench. And uh, it did move that bolt, like, right off the get-go. So it's pretty damn powerful. Let's see if I can get a shot of it. But it is loud. So what I got to do is bang on that spring a little and so that I can get in there and try to get some heat. We get a nice little rust shower. Let's see if I can get a better angle. So hard to film this so I just wanted to show that that's where I'm at and we'll keep trucking. Okay so with warming it up both on the nut head and inside on the other side of the leaf spring over here, hitting that with map gas, warming this up really good with map gas, and then mostly getting it started with this big old cheater bar. And I didn't have this on at the time. I had the uh, impact extender. Um, and then I was using the jack stand so I could, you know, get the initial movement on it. I got it moving. It was pretty, uh, I don't know if I'd say it was easy, but once I got it moving, I was, I don't think it even stuck to the sleeve inside because it was rolling out. And if it was stuck to the sleeve, it wouldn't want to roll out like that. So that's good news. I still have to, I'll have to take a bar or something and pop it out because it's, it's wants to stick in there and I don't. Have something easy but i'll get it so i moved over to the perch to the spring plate 
those were pretty bad. They didn't want to start at all. The, the impact um, got like one of them started, but the rest required a lot of just horsepower. So same thing, breaker bar, shortest extender, mostly a deep well, 18 millimeter socket. Couple, I got a standard well on a couple of them and it's easier because it's shorter, but, but mostly just had to wrench them over. And even once I got them to move, they were still, you know, really tight. So I kept oiling them with Aerocroil and um, heat them up a little bit. And they're moving now. I think the impact has them all moving now. So when I'm ready, I can take those off. So that wasn't too bad, which for this side leaves me pretty much with the bad guy up there. And uh, I guess we'll start hatching a plan for him. I don't know what it is yet. All right, so we got the back one moving. I don't know if you could see it, but right up there. Got about a quarter inch on him. I mean, a quarter inch out. Um, I started him with the half inch breaker with a 21 inch standard well, 20 inch, 21 millimeter standard well. Got him moving a little bit, got more heat on him, got a little more oil in him. Once you get him, once you get that bolt to come out a little bit, make sure to hit it with oil over and over again so it can take advantage of the the break and get some oil in there. And then I heat it up a few more times. Like everybody says, if you don't heat them up, you'll be fighting the Loctite. And it's very, I won't say hard, but it makes the wrench thump and it can just be a real pain. So once you get some heat on them, you can move it a lot smoother. Still hard, but smoother. So that means I got everything moving on this side. Got the front spring bolt, plate bolts, U-bolts, I mean, and the rear uh, perch bolt, the rear spring eye bolt. So we're on our way. I have a feeling what I'm going to do here, though, is um, as unexciting as it is, is I'm going to start tearing into the other side because I don't want to get one side done and find out I can't do the other. So I'm going to start loosening up stuff there. All right, so luckily I pretty much followed the same techniques as I did on the other side and worked everything out. The U-bolts on this side were a little worse, so I took a few more minutes to clean them up, wire brush them, wire wheel, that kind of stuff. That way I could hit them with some oil and try to get some of it in there. Hit them with some heat, hit them with some oil, hit them with some heat. And then just uh, used a breaker bar with the 18 inch, 18 millimeter deep well. And just took it real easy with them at first. And uh, they started moving, so we're good there. This one was about the same. Instead of trying to start it with the impact wrench, I went ahead and just started with the breaker with the cheater. And, um, you know, what everybody says is right. You basically heat up that bolt real hot so that it uh, loosens up the Loctite a little bit, um, helps it move a little. And then at first, if you make just a tiny bit of progress, um, you know, use it. Like, don't, don't try to key man it. Just use that little bit of progress, move the breaker, get a little more. And then as you go, it just gets easier and easier. And then towards the end, I did pull out the impact wrench to run it the rest of the way out because it's pretty slow going with the breaker bar. I tried to put a socket on it, uh, a normal socket wrench, and just didn't have the leverage to keep it moving. So the impact wrench took it out. I'll probably have some fun trying to get those all the way out because they're stuck in there. I mean, they're not stuck stuck. It's just they're pretty in there. So I'm going to have to use some type of angle iron or something to knock them out. Same thing here. Pretty much the same technique. Lots of heat on the bolt. A little bit of heat up by the bushings inside. You're right by the gas tank, so I didn't do a whole lot of that. Um, but just anything you can do to warm up that Loctite definitely moves it. Because once I got it hot, I could rotate it. And then I didn't, I couldn't fit the cheater bar because they're too low to the ground. So I just used my breaker bar, 18 inch. I have a 24 inch inside, but I didn't feel like going and getting it. And I just worked it out one, you know, basically quarter turn at a time. And it that was kind of a muscle, like it took a, a pretty good push on each breaker bar push and uh, just kept working it and working it. That one is really tight to the bushing and maybe as I get the spring adjusted, I'll get it out easier, but I think all of these are gonna require a little muscle to pop them out. So my next thing will be to start getting bolts out and uh, you know, 
I'm getting pretty close to putting the springs in. Hopefully I'm not getting ahead of myself, but so both sides are ready. I'll start with this and we'll see what happens. All right. So big move. This is uh this one's free. I drew the bolt out as far as I possibly could because you do not want the uh, tip of that bolt still in that captured nut when you, uh, if you decide to cut it. If you decide to cut it on the outside, you better make sure that you're not in that captured nut. So I worked on it for a while and pulled it out as far as I absolutely could. I measured against a new bolt to just be doubly sure I was not still in that captured nut. And then I went ahead and chopped off the yeah the bolt i did that with a dremel and it took about 10 minutes it was not too bad at all and then i made sure to taper that a little bit i know it seems like a little detail but i tapered it a bit so that so that it would slide down and not catch and so that paid off because it came out pretty easy this i had taken off without too much stress and once I got, once I beat on the spring a little bit, I was able to take that one out by hand. So that wasn't too bad at all. Um, I think what was fighting me so much is I had not removed the shock. I didn't think it was really necessary, so I didn't. But I released it, and then I realized I could go down a lot lower. So I think that is definitely something you got to do. So that spring is free. Woo! Well, it's a gloomy day, but that spring is in. So we have plate, not too bad at all. So far that's the only one I had to cut out. Not a full cut though, just getting the bolt out. And uh, the other not too bad. Not a whole lot of special stuff. You know, you hear people talking about how it took them like four hours to get the spring out and it took about 20 minutes to get it in. It's true. It's, there's not a whole lot to it. It's not as hard to align as, as you might think. Um, I think I loosely put in the plate so that I could move the ends a little bit, but it was pretty easy to align. I think I'd use a crowbar or something there to, you know, move it down a little bit and then eventually get the and then I was really gentle when I ran the bolts in. Gentle maybe isn't the right word, but you want to be careful not to cross-thread those things if they're at a weird angle. So I just kept moving the thing until I could, you know, sense that it was going in normally. And I uh, didn't overdo it. All right, so first order of business today is we have the spring ready to come out. But I do have one problem to solve, which is I got to get these guys out. And that proved to be kind of a pain in the butt yesterday. I ended up cutting one out, which I think I should not have done. I don't think it was necessary. Um, and I thought I had lots of extra bolts, but this is what sucks. The bolts I ordered are not at all a match for the leaf spring bolts, even though they said they were. So, But luckily, the shackles I bought came with new bolts on it, and I got enough to reuse here, and the bolts are in really good condition when I pull them out. So... I'll just have to be careful not to ruin any bolts today, and we'll be good. And let's get this guy out of here. Oh. So I read somewhere that this pickle fork might help get him out, so that's what I'm going to do. Fingers crossed. So I just want to show this trick. <clears throat> Take a pair of vice grips to cause resistance and then just use a pickle fork while you're spinning it to pull it out. It's working a little slow, but it's working and I'll have it out in a minute. I just wanted to show that that trick. The vice grips is just because once you have it out so far, you got nothing to pickle fork against. Well, I had a suspicion this one was busted in there and sure enough, that would explain the occasional uh, 
um, clank I was getting back there. So kind of a pain to get that bolt out, but I just worked it out a little bit at a time with the pickle fork. All right, so what a pain this guy has been. He's stuck on the sleeve and I just pickle forked it and cold chiseled the seam on the sleeve. Could barely get it to open up. But the good news is I have it backed off far enough that it's not in the other side at all. So now I'm made sure I had enough bolts. I'm gonna make sure again, cause you do not want to cut a bolt and find out you don't have enough. So I'm getting ready to cut him out. And you know, you could use a four inch grinder or something, but you know what's funny is this little Dremel can take care of those bolts in about three minutes. It's pretty cool. So very easy to get in there with them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to chop that bolt off and then the spring will be out. This one has been the hardest bolt on the, the Jeep. So what a pain. Well, the spring is out. Once I got that bolt chopped, it fell right out. So, but you better make sure you have that bolt out as far as you can. Um, so the Dremel would not fit in there and also I ended up using a four inch angle grinder and it cut through it really fast. So, so much for the Dremel. All right, so the right side is in. I'll tie it up. Nothing's torqued down yet. I'll wait till we can lift the whole thing. So I put in my new bumpers. They're a little tall, but my ride should be a little tall right now. So I'm gonna leave them how they are and then I'll cut them down if I have to. So the only bolt that I lost and snapped in the whole job is one of those bumper bolts on the other side. And I was going so easy with it too. Just, I guess it was its time. So I get to drill that out. Maybe I can easy out it or something like that. I gotta take care of that first. Then I'll put in the new bumper. All this slime, by the way, is fluid film to uh, you know, help with the rust and stuff as we go through the year. All right, so we got it fully jacked up. All the weight is on the uh, axle and springs now. So we're getting ready for the final tight down. So I ended up drilling out the other bolt for the bumper. Um, wasn't able to get it completely drilled out, so I just ran something smaller up into it. The other bolt's fine, so it just has to sit still, so it's probably not an issue. If it ever is an issue, I'll just replace it or something. Lots of fluid film so that it can work into all the nooks and crannies, crannies and try to keep the rust at bay. Plus, a lot of these places are hard to hit when you got the wheels and stuff on, so it's good to hit it now. All right, so the wheels are back on. And the moment of truth is... Now, it's hard to do this on camera, so I already did it by hand, but it's exactly 19 inches, which is exactly what the Dorman Springs promised, which was would be uh, one over stock. So I was at 16, so I was too low, two inches low. 18 would have been original, and one over would be 19. So 19 in the back it is, and they're both exactly 19, so both springs are doing exactly what they should. So... Pretty much the job is done. This is a one day job really, if you can start early in the morning and work hard. Um, took me about one and a half days because it's a really noisy job and I live in a quiet neighborhood. So there you have it. So it's all done, 19 inches on the back and you can definitely see it sitting higher. Is the Jeep all lifted up, Sam? Yeah. 